Hello, this is Eugene Blanchard of TelecomWorld101.com. Um, this is part three of the TCPIP and the OSI model, and part three deals specifically with the network devices that are associated with uh, the layers of the TCPIP protocol stack. So what next? This is the best part. We can map network devices to the TCPIP and OSI model. So, so a good way to describe and devices are made this way. To describe devices, we can map them right to the TCP, TCP IP and OSI model. Okay, physical layer, OSI model layer. We're going to start at the bottom at the physical layer because it's kind of easier to do it. And uh, devices that extend the physical network belong on the physical layer. So these devices extend the physical network. They work on the bits. Uh, they don't make any decisions at all. They deal with the physical characteristics, voltage, cable type, transfer rates, etc. And devices that work at this layer are repeaters. They extend the LAN. Um, we don't use repeaters too often anymore. Now what we commonly use, we commonly call them transceivers. So an example is Ethernet typically can only, uh, cable length is 100 meters. Well, if you wanted to go longer, what you could do is use a transceiver, transceiver, which converts from copper to fiber. Copper can only go 100 meters. Fiber can go a couple kilometers. So you put a transceiver that converts from copper to fiber. Then at the other end, you put another transceiver that cons converts from fiber to copper. Right? Uh, now, if you take typically a, a repeater or a transceiver has an in and an out. Well, if you take a a repeater and put multi ports on it we call that a hub and that was used for 10 base T and that's obsolete we don't use hubs anymore except for some really unusual situations but mostly we don't use hubs it's obsolete technology data link layer still the OSI model we're talking here the PDU is the frame and the addressing is the physical MAC address right so physical MAC same thing uh, devices at the data link layer they make decisions now based on the physical address of the source or destination address. So we can make decisions. Decisions we make is really simple. Do we forward or not to forward a frame? So we can make decisions. So devices that work at this level, layer, uh, the first devices were called bridges. They had only two ports and in and out. They work at the data link layer and examine frames and make decisions based on whether they want to forward or not to forward frames. We do this for a number of reasons. We can uh, reduce congestion. We can break our network up into different sections. Uh, we can do security and that. Now if you take a bridge that has two ports and start adding more ports to it, we call that a switch. So Ethernet switches are multi-port bridges. And uh, so sometimes if you deal with switches, you'll hear things about uh, called bridge protocol data units and that. So it goes back to the original bridge concept. Internet network layer devices, the PDU for this is packets and the addressing is IP addresses. Devices examine the packets, make decisions based on the IP address to forward or not to forward the packet. Right. So routers work at the internet network layer. Right. So internet is the uh, TCP IP uh, protocol and network is the OSI model. So it's the same network. So routers work at the internet network layer. So what happens is routers find the networks. And what do they use to find the networks? IP addresses. Layer 3 switches, layer 3 switches can do the job of both a switch and a router. So what they can do is they'll examine the uh, I, uh, IP packets, look at the addresses, and then they'll act like a router. Or they'll look at a frame, examine the physical address, and work like a switch. We used to call this a router, a bridge router, but we don't hear that term anymore. Now we call it layer 3 switches. Transport layer devices, the PDU is a segment and the addressing is ports. Devices examine the segments, make decisions based on the port number to forward or not to forward the segment. Firewalls make decisions based on the port number. You might have a firewall on your network that says I'm only going to allow traffic in to port 80 to my web server or to port 443 to my secure web server or port 25 to my email server or port 20 and 21 to my FTP server and I'll block everything else. I won't forward it. So firewalls make decisions based on the port number. Application layer devices, TCP IP layer, the PDU is data 
and there is no addressing. But what happens is devices examine the contents of the data. It could be the, uh, and make decisions based on the contents, to forward or not to forward the data. So some of the things it can do is it can check email to see what the contents are. Is it spam email? It's can, it can check um, uh, the web address, www.sex.com. Do we want that? So it's looking at uh, uh, the, the contents of, of the information. I just noticed I spelt addressing wrong. <laughs> Only one S. Missing an S. Oh well. Application layer gateways make decisions based on the content of the data, ALGs. Sometimes we'll hear it called stateful packet inspection. It, we're actually looking into the content and making a decision. So device summary, application layer, application layer gateways, ALGs, they inspect data, make a decision based on it. Uh, stateful packet inspection is another term. Transport layer, firewalls, they make decisions based on ports. Internet network layer, routers and layer 3 switches, they examine the packets and make decisions based on IP addresses. Data link layer, bridges and switches, they take a look at the frame and look at, make decisions based on the physical addresses. Physical layer, re the repeaters and hubs, transceivers, they make no decision, all they do is regurgitate the data and regurgitate the bits. This is Eugene Blanchard for Telecom World 101.com. Uh, this is the end of part three. Next, what we're going to have is part four is TCP IP and the OSI model, a summary. Uh, think of it as uh, the first three parts all in a fast track version. Thank you for watching.